Hey everyone, Sam here. In this video, I just want to take you through some of the learnings I've had personally around using ChatGPT with my own work within Power BI. I'm constantly amazed at how incredible it is at helping me at all steps along the way from just understanding and having some intuition around the Power BI interface to helping me with the query editor, to helping me with my formulas, helping with me with visualization ideas, um, even evaluating my data. It's really quite unbelievable what you can do. And so I wanna take the time to just walk you through my findings, walk you through a few examples, showcase the possibilities, and then really empower you to take your own development work to another level. Also increase your productivity by uh, a huge percentage. So I think we're in this new AI supported era. And as I've been saying for months now, you can do so much more. And the same can be said for Power BI itself. You can do so much more, build so uh, much better models, uh, develop things in a best practice way right out of the box. So it's an exciting time. And I'm keen to uh, fill you in on all my learnings and all the ways that I have been using it and, and would suggest you use it as well. A couple of things I want to make clear before we dive into some specific examples is that the framework that Enterprise DNA has always uh, discussed around or always trained everyone on around the Power BI development, the four pillar framework, has not changed at all. ChatGPT doesn't actually do anything for you. What it does do though, is it is an incredible tutor. It's an incredible assistant. It's an incredible co-pilot to help on each part of those, that pillar framework. And those pillars include power query, you know, loading and transforming data, data modeling, DAX calculations, and reports and visualizations. All of these things are still absolutely best practice for Power BI reports and part of the core framework around Power BI development, but we can amazingly just get support at every step along the way. And that's the amazing thing. We can have this incredible co-pilot helping us at every turn. Uh, and I just think you'll be honestly mind blown around how in depth it can actually go. And so the idea is to really just highlight that with a number of examples, Use, using a data set that we haven't really looked at, uh, that I haven't really studied much or used at all. And then just to work through how it can help me at all of those different stages. One of the things I do want to really highlight at this point uh, is the chat GPT environment. Now, there's really two options. One is 3.5 and one is 4. Just think of these as like totally different models, totally different engines of, of uh, intelligence. And 4 is much better than 3.5 for Power BI work. I find that with 3.5, it just doesn't seem to be as trained as uh, 4 is uh, on very specific things around the Power BI interface, things like DAX formulas, Power Query code, um, yeah, and, and, and a few few other things. So GPT-4 is much better. It is a premium subscription though, so be aware of that. You do have to upgrade if you want the full capabilities. It also, I would say, has a much better understanding of structured data in general as well. So as we'll go through, you can actually just sort of copy and paste uh, data into ChatGPT and get lots of ideas. And so that's something to have a have a think about in terms of utilizing it. There's one engine which is better than the other, and you just need to um, really factor that in. I will say that 3.5 is very good for the vast majority of tasks. Uh, 3.4, uh, 4, just uh, GPT-4 just has that little bit extra intelligence, intuition, I feel. Uh, which can really help us out. Okay, so I've downloaded some data out of the Enterprise DNA platform, and I'm going to just show you how even without getting to Power BI, we can start evaluating our, our data. So I've downloaded a pharmaceutical um, data set uh, of, of transactions, and we'll use ChatGPT to learn and find out more about uh, this data set. So I'm just copying a subset. There are limits of how much you can put into ChatGPT. I'm going to copy a subset of this. I'm going to put it into ChatGPT4, but I'm going to ask a question first. I'm going to ask it to act like an analyst and to evaluate the data set and give me some um, findings, give me some ideas around it.
Okay, so we've got our answer, and as you can see, it's pretty amazing. I mean, it's it's evaluated uh, what the the data set actually is—a sales record of medical products. It's gone through every single column and told me a little bit of detail about the column, so I can get a really solid understanding. Even if I'm a complete novice, but you know, I find this useful as well um, for for someone who's been doing this for a while. And then it even gave me, as a data analyst, some ideas that I could focus on, right? Sales over time, medical use, regional analysis, product pricing, external agents, profitability analysis. So these aren't very advanced or anything, but at least they give me a start. They give me a really solid start around um, what I can be doing inside of the Power BI environment. So in terms of just data understanding, just getting a, a good feel for what, what we can achieve, I think this is an incredible way to kickstart any project within, within Power BI. So now we're ready to jump into Power BI. And one of the, one of the trickier things I've, I've found uh, when uh, teaching a lot of people how to use Power BI is it's hard to know where to start. And we can actually ask ChatGPT. And it, and it really flows back to our first pillar of uh, Power BI development, loading and transforming data. And you do this with the Power Query Editor, right? So we go to transform data like this, and we need to bring in the bring in the data set uh, into here via new source. There's a few there's a few other ways you can do this, but this is this is sort of the general workflow that um, that I pers personally use. Now we can go to ChatGPT here, and even if I was a complete novice, I could ask something as simple as, "How do I uh, start working inside a Power BI?" So let's actually give this a go, and we'll see what it comes up with. And I think you'll be pretty amazed. So if you have a look at that, it's pretty detailed, right? And this is why I say I, I, I feel like GPT-4 actually has an intuitive feel for the Power BI interface. I mean, it literally talked us through a way to, to, to bring the data in, open Power Query, and start cleaning up um, the data, right? And it hasn't given us many tips uh, thus far, but we can ask for that. But it gives even the most novice user a clear direction on how to actually get in and start using the Power Query Editor. But now I'm going to ask it a bit more about, okay, what sort of transformations should I be aiming for? I mean, this is a fantastic answer, actually. I mean, it just basically lists out all the best practices around how to um, work within the Power Query Editor. It doesn't give me specifics, which is a touch annoying, um, where it, it, it really should, but it at least gives me all the things that I, I should flow through, right? Like if I was, if I was teaching you how to do this, um, specifically how to, how to use Power Query, these are the simple things that I would advise to do one after the next. Okay, so we've done the Query Editor. Now we can move on to the model. And this is where I think it's quite amazing. It has it has a feel for the model, which is probably the hardest thing to know inside a Power BI. So I can ask it to be a data modeling expert and tell me how I should build an optimized model around that data set that I input. Okay, so you see here, I mean, it's pretty amazing. It gave me the fact table and then it gave me my dimension tables. Sometimes I call these lookup tables. And then it broke down, okay, medical use, company information, external agent. These are all very logical um, options that you should aim for within the data model, right? So within the modeling area here, that's exactly how I would advise to build it. And it is telling you step-by-step step how to do it. Then it says, uh, and what well, walks you through how to actually build that out step-by-step. Uh, step. Once the data is loaded into Power BI, go to model view by clicking the icon on the left hand side panel so it's giving me step by step which is pretty amazing pretty amazing okay so here's a, a few tips now also on how to start using dax now the flow of how i personally work with dax and as i always start simple and then i move to more advanced calculations and as you'll see here i can just through the right prompting i can actually get pretty much everything that i 
need to a point around my my formulas inside of power bi and one thing i will say is you can actually get quite advanced i won't i won't do it in too too much detail here but i've i've, I've been doing ranking formulas basket analysis uh, moving averages for me is all, all possible inside um, of this environment. But I'm going to start simple to begin with. Okay, so it's giving me some good ideas here. Uh, but it hasn't given me exactly what I, I want based on the specific data. So what I'm going to do um, is I'm going to ask it to redo it, but do it with this the data set that we are using. Can, even though this is pretty good, what they've advised here. So you see here, that's pretty amazing, right? And this is just the start. This is just our core measures. But what I found is that I can get a lot of these measures into my model within, you know, three to five minutes, just by quick prompting, copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. I can do the same for time intelligence functions using date add. I can use uh, cum create a cumulative total using calculate and all selected. I can create a moving average. I can create some ranking formulas. So I have found that I can literally create um, between you know close to 30 formulas very very quickly to give me the bulk of my analysis inside of my power bi report so it's incredibly powerful from a productivity perspective um, to use it in this in this fashion and to use it on your specific data okay so even for things like visualization which you'd think would be quite hard to give advice on we can actually find also some pretty helpful tips so we can ask something as simple as um, can you give me a range of So you see here, these are all fantastic tips. I mean, I've created videos in the past which basically go through exactly these things. Uh, understand your audience, start with a clear objective, choose the right visuals, keep it simple, use consistent design. I mean, these are all great. Now, I wanna show you one last thing though, which I think is equally as amazing, is I'm gonna ask to uh, ChatGPT to be a visualization expert and then say, can you give me specific locations on a um, report where I sh that I'm creating for executives to showcase the key insights from our data. Okay. So this is pretty incredible, right? It told me the key insights based on that data set that I should um, try and understand uh, and um, showcase. And then it's actually gone in and said, proceeded how to arrange and design visuals to answer these questions. Revenue over time, place this visual on the top of the report as it sets the context for overall performance. Revenue by market, place this visual under the trend visual. So it can see, it's, it's crazy how it really knows the it has a feel for the interface it can tell you exactly where to place things on your dashboard so i i you know and you can get pretty specific here uh, on any you know you could probably put all of the measures that you have uh, and advise okay which ones should i design in this report page and this report page so it doesn't do it for you which i said right at the beginning but it definitely does assist it can really assist and help with your creativity which can save you a lot of mental energy but also just make you like a lot more productive in an area which is sometimes very hard to get right 
uh, as, a, as, a, as a data professional. So the help that you can get here is phenomenal. So really suggest um, utilizing it for visualization even um, in, your, in your daily workflow. Okay, just to wrap things up, it's pretty incredible, right? What you can do within ChatGPT to support many things you do, but as a data professional, it can support nearly every part of our workflow. Um, with Power BI specifically, it can help with our uh, pillar framework to develop uh, effectively at each turn, you know, at each step along um, the development cycle. It can help us with the query editor. I mean, we, we didn't even go into things like Power Query Code and um, the optimizations that you can do there. I mean, that's probably a, a, another video in itself. Um, also, just the ability to dream up the data model, understand which relationships to draw between different tables. It even created a model out of one single table that we uh, input. Um, so think about what it could do if you showcased uh, other various tables you had in your model and it was a little bit more complex. I mean, it can, it can work all of that out for you. Uh, it can really help you with speed of getting all your DAX formulas together, but also actually be a tutor around various different DAX functions um, and really explain how each separate DAX function works uh, within any formula you are currently auditing or that, uh, that, you, that you need for a project you're working on. Visualizations, I mean, it can help incredibly there just on ideas, creativity, inspiration, um, and you can and you'll layer that on top of your own experience and expertise around, um, you know, what your your managers, your executives, your teammates, what they want to actually see and what they want to um, be able to review, uh, you know, within within your within your environment. So this is just a summary video. There's there's much deeper that you can actually go, um, and I've I've been using it extensively, learning a lot, and you know. It's it's can be a little bit daunting because and, and feels somewhat challenging because it, it is really doing a lot of the the work that we do as data professionals. But I want to you know, reassure you that this is just the most incredible productivity enhancer I have ever um, come across. I mean, it is an inflection point in uh, our everyday work that we um, will do going forward uh, as as data professionals. You can just do so much more. So. If you are a data person, I wouldn't be worried if, uh, that, that your um, that your job's being taken over or that um, that uh, you're probably not required now because you can just do so much more. You can do Python, you can do SQL, you can do R, you can integrate all these things with the help of ChatGPT into your Power BI reports. You can do five times as much as you probably thought you ever could do, um, and that's the way you got to think about it, uh, and that's the way uh, you've got to um, get excited. You know, you got to get excited about that. You know, I personally am, and I think uh, I think you all should as well. Okay, thanks all. Uh, see you soon.